That verse seems to almost say it all right there, doesn't it? Yeah. When uh, you, you get to read the story of the, of the gospel, which, which uh, I want to invite you to listen to as our readers for the gospel Easter story come forward this morning, uh, one of the things I want you to notice is the amount of darkness that is in this story, and we're going to highlight that here in just a moment. Saturday evening, when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome went out and purchased burial spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. Barely early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they were asking each other, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. The women were shocked, but the angel said, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you before he died. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, thank you much. Let's put that right there. So Jesus was betrayed and he was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane in the darkness of night. He was beat. He was crucified. So much darkness. When Jesus died on the cross... Mark's gospel says that darkness came over the land from noon till three in the afternoon. (laughs) I guess we're going to have something like that happen here before too long. I didn't catch that until just now. (laughs) When Mary Magdalene and, and the other women, they went to the tomb in the early hours of the morning, it makes sense that it was still kind of dark outside as the sun was just starting to break in the early morning. And then you have all the disciples that had been mourning for three days here who had been just overcome with just grief and disappointment and just utter shock and and deep-seated sorrow because they thought, here we go, it's our turn. And how can that happen if our Messiah is dead and buried in a tomb? Had evil really snuffed out the light of hope? I can see them thinking this question in their heads as, and in their hearts, you know, as they're wrestling. And was the chaos too strong? Had God not really been strong enough for that? It's just immense wrestling. We know about brokenness, don't we? Anybody? I imagine it would be a fair statement to say probably everybody in here knows what it's like to feel some sort of brokenness, sorrow, chaos evil, anger, hatred that comes upon your life, wells up within you perhaps, despair, defeat, grief, brokenness, shame, hopelessness, woe is me, always the victim because you want to protect yourself from being hurt again, not thinking that we're good enough, that we don't deserve to be really loved by other people or even by God. Temptations to attach ourselves to things to try to escape that. Or maybe just to bury it. To pretend it doesn't exist. To try to escape it all. Being prideful. Having a false sense of security. How am I doing? Am I checking off any boxes on any list this morning? Because I already have for mine. The darkness is real. And I know we know that coming in today and on Easter Sunday we go, why do we want to talk about that? Because if you want to talk about the light and you want to talk about the life, you need to be reminded of the darkness because it's the darkness that makes the light so bright and so glorious and so really good. And I'll try to keep it right at that level of excitement for us today and not go over the top. A number of years ago before uh, my family and I moved back here, 
I was in ministry and I was finding that I would have these moments where I would um, be overcome with anger and it would come out and something would happen that would sort of prompt that. But what I was sort of realizing or recognizing was that the level of the anger coming out didn't really make sense with what had happened. So you'd have like this disproportionate anger that right? comes out of a small thing and go, well, that's not really something you would go bonkers over. But like it would come out of me, right? And then I'd get over and I'd move on or something would happen and somebody, you know, that you would go, dude, no, I'd get like seriously angry about that. But then for me, I'm, I may just turn sort of apathetic. You know that word? Like I just kind of don't care or just shut down. It's, um, and you go, well, if anything, you should have got upset. Like I would understand that. Why'd you blow up over that? And for my wife, my kids start to experience some of that. And it was happening enough that I recognized that uh, this is not a good path forward. I can't keep doing this. I got to, like, it has to end somehow. I found that I was, like, blaming problems, things that I saw, instead of looking at what was going on inside of me. You ever do that? I was doing that. It, and I can't help but think of the angels when they spoke to the women at the tomb on Easter morning in, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, verse 5. The angels say, I'm guessing it's probably one, but say uh, to the women, says, why do you look for the living among the dead. And we go, well, yeah, of course. Is, why? What's an interesting way of saying that, isn't it? Like, why are you looking for the living among the dead? That's kind of an interesting way of phrasing that. It's, you know, why are you looking for death when life is won? Why are you looking for defeat when the Messiah has conquered death in the grave, right? So you're looking at the wrong thing. You're going to look for one thing, and you're not seeing what's really happened on the inside of that tomb. And you know, I kind of kept learning through that experience in my life was that what you look for often determines what you find. What you look for often determines what you find. What do you mean, Pastor Andy? If you go looking for evil and chaos, you're going to find it. And if you go looking for dysfunction and crises and woe is me, all the problems, you're going to find those things because there's plenty of them all around you. They're there. It won't take you long. I promise you that. If you go looking for evil and all the things that are wrong, you'll find plenty because they're out there. But you don't have to go looking for those things. You can also... Take a different pathway. I mean, you can look at the tomb and expect to see the darkness. But what I love is the angels say, but why don't you look for something different in the midst of the emptiness? Oh, that if, if you would take a different approach, that if you would look with faith in Christ as you peer into the emptiness, into the darkness, that if you'll go looking for light in the darkness, if you'll go looking for peace amidst the chaos, if you'll go looking for hope where there is despair, and if you'll go looking for mercy where there is suffering, and freedom where there is bondage, and restoration where there is brokenness. But what if you also went bringing those things into all of the chaos and the darkness and the evil and the brokenness and the suffering and the bondage. What if you came being light and peace and hope and mercy and freedom and restoration in Christ? If you go looking for the light, you'll find it. Because the light and what comes with the light, those are the blessings of salvation. 
That's what we call the fruit of salvation that comes out of the work of Christ in your life. Not because you worked hard and you had a good counselor or because you had good parents that taught you or good grandparents that taught you right from wrong or you had good school. Like, that's all wonderful and I love that. That's a privilege. It's great. But none of that compares to what the Spirit of God will birth in you and bear out of you if you put your faith in Christ and choose to try to look for the light amidst the darkness you will find that there is light to be seen in an empty tomb that you have all around you. There are plenty of empty tombs with darkness. And what Jesus tells us is that if you'll call on my name in the darkness, I will bring light to your darkness. If you will look unto me when you are feeling pressed and the darkness seems to be consuming all around you, I promise you that I will lift you up. And when you can't seem to take anymore, if you will just look unto me, I will prop you up and I will hold you up and I will give you strength that you don't possess. But I'm tired, I know. But he says, I'm tireless. And and, and I'm weak. He says, I know, but I'm strong. He said, but I'm so feel disturbed. And I know, but I am peace in the storm. I know, but I feel like I'm sinking. I know, but I'm a God that walks on water. But all my relationships seem like they're dysfunctional and broken around me. Yeah, but I'm a God who can bring peace where there's brokenness, and I just need you to trust me. Yeah, but I can't understand why. I didn't ask you to understand everybody else. I asked you to listen to me and walk with me. And see, the light I shine in you may lead you to change some relationships with some folks that are bringing dysfunction that really aren't healthy for you right now. And God says, I need you to just slow down. I need you to step aside. I need you to just walk with me. I need you to turn around and look because I'm standing right there. I love that. Paul says it wonderfully like this. In 1 Corinthians 15, this is so good. And it says, where is your victory, death? Like, where is your sting, death? Thanks be to God who gives us this victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, the victory has been won. There is light over the darkness. It's absolutely wonderful. And this is the moment that we're going to have some fun. I have got a kid's moment for today. And um, I need a couple of my uh, assistants to come and bring our table over here uh, this morning. Over here, we have got some treats for the kids. And so what what I need is all of the, in just a second, all the kids that, so you, um, Maybe if you're high school and younger and want to participate, yeah, I know, right? Some of you are like, oh, but I'm a kid at heart. <laughs> There's, it's cupcakes. I'm, don't I count? <laughs> all right, so here's what we need. They're setting this up. I need, all right, so all of the kids that want to participate in this, uh, and, I, and you get a cupcake to, to take with you. And here's the thing. So, all right, moms and dads, I wrestled with this. I'm going to apologize in advance. They can, it's on a, tray, a plate. They can take the cupcake back with them. It's up to you if you want them to eat it or to put it under your seat. You can handle that however you want. That's up to you. Um, but I want, them to just, I want them to really like me, so I'm going to give them a treat today. <laughs> yes, this is good. <laughs> I, do, I do what I can. All right, so... Uh, Go ahead, if you would, and just start, all right, lighting all these candles, okay, for me. All right, let's see how many kids we've got. I don't know that, I have 30 cupcakes. I'm not, I don't know that we have 30 kids, so I think we'll be okay. All right, so all the kids to come on up here, and a couple adults, can you help just work with these kids, getting them around the the table here this morning? Come on up, come on up. So try to find a spot around, come on this side of the table as well. So what I can do is maybe some of the older kids today, you can hold your plate so the younger kids can be around the table. Yeah, you can just kind of come around. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Kind of come around. Let the little ones in and the bigger kids can...
Are you guys are you guys disappointed I didn't say college students too? Uh, how many? You might take the candle out of it. I think we do have volunteer firemen here, right? Is that yes? At least one, two? All right, good. I think we're okay. Nurses, bandages for fire burns. Okay, we got one. All right, very good. All right, are we about ready, guys? No. No? Thank you for speaking the truth. Boldly and honestly. All right, make room for all the little ones to come in. All right, here we go. All right, so. Parents and kids. When Christ was crucified, died and buried in the tomb, to the disciples, to the world, it seemed as though the light had been snuffed out. Blow out your candles, go. Blow them out. Come on, blow, blow the candle out. Blow the candle out. Right. Open that door over there. Crack that door over there. Hey, wait a second. Here. You're gonna, we're going to dump them in there. What? Your candles keeps coming back. You're good. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on. Are the candles keep, why do these candles keep coming lit again? Why do they keep doing that? What? I, yeah, just take the, take that. Just the. I, don't. Wait a second. Wait a minute. Your candle keeps being relit. I don't understand. It's almost kind of like when the darkness. Hey, kids, listen up. Everybody back away from the table. Back away from the table. I love it. All right, make sure all the candles get in the bowl of water. Hold on. Put it in the bowl, please. Thank you, guys. All right, grab your cupcake and go back to your seat. Sometimes the ideas seem really good in the head, and then you go to do them, and you go, well, that almost backfired. I know, right? It is, it is. is Go ahead. Yeah, take one with you, bud. You guys take this table. There we go. Yeah. There you go, sweetheart. I don't know if I could say, uh, if I could make like the lesson any clearer than the, what uh, the Apostle John says in his gospel. And I, w- I want to read that to you. Um, if you'll put that up on the screen. It, it says this. It says, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. The, the gospel truth is that look, sin and evil will never overcome Jesus. The darkness will, will never overtake the light. And that's why we use trick candles today to have a little fun, right? Because no matter how hard any force tries to snuff out the light of Christ, it cannot, it will not, it never will. Because the light of Christ wins over sin and evil. <laughs> Thus he's overcome death and the grave. And that's, that's the heart of what I want all of us and our kids today to walk away with and Paul says, he goes, you know, death no longer has power over him. It's in Romans chapter 6. He says, he died to sin once and for all. 
with his death, but he lives for God with his life. You know, I told you earlier I had that uh, time of wrestling with anger, you know, that was coming out. And so um, I, went, I went to a counselor and it's to get help. Because it was like there was a ceiling that I couldn't like get above, no matter how hard I tried. It was just like I couldn't make it stop or rise up above it, you know. Because sometimes, what do we think? Oh, I'm strong enough. Like I, I'm, I'm, I can make this. And no matter what I tried, I just couldn't, I couldn't do that. So I went and I met with a guy who was uh, walked me through to help me to understand anger and to help me understand where the source of it was, because I was looking at the problems. But the truth was, it wasn't all the problems outside, it was inside of me that was causing these emotional responses to come out, and he helped me to work through and understand and to, how, and, and to walk with Christ through that and in the Word and, and to, that relationship with the Lord, and, and that journey brought healing. What you go looking for often determines what you find. And I learned that even, please listen very carefully to this, even though you put your faith in Christ, and today may be the first day you ever do that, or you may have before, or maybe you've gone distant and you're like, I don't know, maybe I need to kind of get right with God again, I don't know. I can promise you this, that even if, you say, even if today you say, I'm getting right with the Lord today, and I hope that you do, and that's wonderful. He's not going to undo your past. He's not going to make you forget about it all. He's not going to take away the memories and the hurt and, and, and the stress that, and the anxieties or whatever that may be from your past. That stuff is still there because it's part of your story. It's, it's your experiences, and, and those do not go away. It's your journey. But what Jesus does is he unchains you from being so tied and in bondage to that that it does not overcome you and any longer define who you are in your story because he defines your identity through your salvation. He's the one that says who you were is not who you are in me and who you are is something I'm still growing and I'm still shaping as the days are marching on. Because I'm not done with your future. I'm not done with you yet. And I love that. And he'll invite you to step into the light and out of darkness. And for some of you, that may be really hard because when he invites you to do that, you have grown so accustomed over time to be able to learn how to function in the darkness that to think about taking a different path in life is scary because you don't know how to live in that different environment, a different way of living. Because what you know is the darkness and how to navigate anxieties and fear or depression and despair and all of the darkness. You feel like you have a sense of like, I can handle all that, but it's just a lie because you really can. It's handling you. That's the truth. And he'll invite you to step into the light. But you're going to have to trust him for that. And he's going to teach you that nothing good grows in the darkness. You can try to bury it and put, and put the lock on it in the, in the trunk and act like it don't exist. But it still exists. It's still there. And it will come out and it will bite you and it will hurt. Nothing good grows in the darkness. You have to shine the light of truth onto it. Because the light can cast out the darkness. The light can bring the healing and the restoration and bring hope where there's all the other junk. And I almost had junk in the trunk. But that is not the same thing. And His mercy will shine on you every day. As Lamentations 3 tells us, He will be your God and you will be His child. You are His adopted child. You are in a kingdom, but you are in a family. And that family comes with a father who loves you and who has saved you and has plans for you that you don't even understand. Who would have thought after these years, three more kids? Huh. Who would have thought? Another one? 
Who would have thought that after these years, God would open up this door for me? Wow, I didn't see that coming. That I would meet this person? Wow, I didn't see that coming. That I would be given an opportunity to, to minister after brokenness and to heal together and to go together on a journey to just shake the kingdom and the community with the goodness of God? Who would have thunk it? But I'm so glad God was already thinking about the good plans he had for us when we didn't even see him. And he already knew. And he said, I'm not done. But won't you trust me? And won't you walk in the light as I am in the light? And won't you take a step of courageous faith and see where we go? You notice I didn't say see where you go. See where we go. That you may go in Christ, with Christ, with the body of Christ, on the mission of Christ, the mission of the church, to share the light of Christ with the world. That the world may know that He is a God of light and truth and love amidst all of the lies and the darkness and the evil and the chaos and the hurt and the pain. He is a God of restoration and hope. That's a God that the world wants to get behind, but they just don't know that that's who and He is because they're blinded in the darkness. They're lost in the darkness. And if you're lost in that darkness today, can I ask you a question? Is there any reason why today wouldn't be a good day to step into the light of putting your faith in Christ? Nothing, nothing will change your life like the love of God. But you've got to trust Him. And you will be more than a conqueror over the darkness in your life through Him who loves you. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Amen.